Hello, grade tens. So today we're going to do something different, um, and this is on page fifteen of your booklets. And it's a nice way. To, it's a nice thing to teach you because it's related to the mole ratio, and you're going to use it quite a bit with stoichiometry. Everything that we've been doing has got to do with stoichiometry, which is um, it's all a build up. And I've said this before, and I'm going to say, and, and I'll say it again. Anyway, let's get back to empirical formula. Empirical formula is, in a nutshell, what does the word empirical mean? Empirical means experimental. Empirical means an educated guess. And that is what chemists do when you are presented with an unknown substance. Sometimes you might know what the mass is of the different components of that compound or substance. You might know the percentage composition of the of the different elements or compounds that are in a substance, but you don't know what you still it's still an unknown unknown substance, and it's your job to identify that. And the first step is that we look at um, a nice way of doing this is empirical formula. So. It is a it's, it's a relative ratio of different atoms in a compound. Now, I don't want you guys to get confused by this and think that it's the same thing as molecular formula. The two are different, like they can be the same. Your empirical formula can be the same as your molecular formula, but it's not always like that. It's important to differentiate the two and know that your empirical formula doesn't always represent the actual number of atoms in the compound, and your molecular formula represents the actual composition of the compound. So please, in your books, this is not written in your book, so if I were you, I'd make a note of this, I'd make little notes on the side of your, of your booklet um, on, page four, uh, on page 15, or on a separate page, whatever works for you. Um, but it's it's actually quite a cool way of um, identifying the substance or working towards identifying the substance. Okay, so on page 15, there's a definition. I want you to highlight that definition. That definition is very important. And in that, and I've, I've copy-pasted onto the slide because the definition it's it puts it describes everything you don't need anything else in the definition um i've just explained to you why we how we use empirical formula and why we use it the definition is it's it's the description in a in 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 this in its most concise form so the empirical formula of a compound is the simplest ratio of elements in the compound Remember that, the simplest ratio, the simplest, which means that you might get the empirical formula of a compound, but that is not the molecular formula. So you've seen before, grade tens, you could have two elements that have, been, have bonded together and formed a compound. The ratio of the atoms that are bonded in that compound determines the physical and chemical properties of that compound, and therefore the molecular formula. So just bear that in mind. Bear that in mind because later on you're going to watch another video which shows how you can, now that you have your empirical formula, you can actually work out your molecular formula. I haven't included it in this video. Um, so the goal is to get to the simplest ratio of elements in a compound. It has to be whole numbers. There's no decimals here whatsoever. Great sense. If I see a decimal, you're going to mess up your entire calculation. And usually these calculations are eight, nine steps. So it has to be a whole number. Let's look at the steps. And I want you to write these steps down for yourself. Is, um, it's it, and it's also it's known as mole ratio. So maybe make a little um, little column in the margin and write these steps down. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to start with the number of grams of each element. Sometimes you are given this amount in grams. Sometimes you are given in percentage. So remember that 
if it's given in percentage, you need to assume that the total mass of the entire substance is 100 grams. Percentage is going to equal the, the mass and vice versa. You're going to calculate the moles of the different atoms. Okay, and you know how to do this now. You know how to work out the moles based on your molecular, your relative molecular mass and the mass. Then you're going to divide each mole value by the simplest mole value. You're going to see how that we're going to we're going to work through an example with calcium hydroxide. It's actually very simple. It's actually quite quite easy once you get the hang of it. There's a schematic here on the slide if you want to. Take a photo of this or a screenshot and stick this in your own notes. Do so. Um, you can also Google schematics. There's so many out there. It's just the simplest way to, to um, summarize these steps. Once you have divided each mole value by the smallest value, you have to round off to the nearest whole number. This is the mole ratio, and it's represented by the subscripts in your empirical formula. You have to round off to the nearest number, whole number. Okay. Now, what happens if you have, you've got an obscure decimal um, value, and that is far away from a whole number? The next slide is going to explain exactly what you're going to do. As I said before, if that number, you now in step four, if that number is too small or far, far away to round, or far to round, okay? So you've got 0 0.1 or you've got 0 0.9, um, you, you, you've got a very obscure number. Then you have to multiply each solution by the same factor. So whatever you, if you've got a weird number, say for example, you've got 0 0.5, and you decide to double 0 0.5, to get to one, then that means you have to double all of the numbers, all of the values in your um, in your compound. You can't just do one. Okay. So if the solution is one point five, then you multiply each solution in the problem by two to get to three. Okay. If one solution is one point two five, then you have to multiply each solution in the problem by four. Five. You need to get to the simplest whole number. I know this is a lot of theory and it's a lot that I'm throwing at you, but I promise you it's very, very easy once you get the hang of it. Here is the example that I was talking about, the calcium hydroxide example, which is nicely spaced out step by step to show you how we determine the empirical formula of a compound, the experimental formula. You, well, I'm going to start with the number of grams of each element. So you've got calcium, oxygen, and hydrogen there. The second step, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to have to convert the mass of each element to moles. So you have to determine the moles. You have to calculate the moles. So what are we doing here, guys? You literally ta taking your mole formula. You are literally going mass divided by molecular mass, relative molecular mass, to work out the moles of each element. So yeah, we've got 0 0.337 moles for calcium, 0 0.675 for oxygen, and 0 0.668 for hydrogen. Okay, so which mole value is the smallest here? It's definitely calcium. So hang fire, pause, and keep that in mind for the next, for, for step three. In step three, just like I said before, and I told you guys to write down your steps in the margin, you have to divide each mole value by the smallest number of moles calculated. So that was for calcium, remember? Each one, including the calcium, to round to the nearest whole number. So here, you are going to see that it's going to be, for, for calcium, it's going to be one. Your ratio is going to be one. Your mole, mole ratio is one. For oxygen, it's two. And for hydrogen, it's two. That means you've got a what? One to two to two ratio. Okay? What? For every calcium, you've got, you're going to have two oxygens and two hydrogens. Okay? So your empirical formula is written first. And then after that, okay, this is an example of the empirical formula not working with the um, molecular formula. Then after that, 
you, you by using your molar mass you can work out your um, uh, molecular formula so there's an attached video for this lesson that I that I found and I thought that's a nice way to show you that if you have your empirical formula and you have your 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 um, molar mass the molar mass of your compound then you can work out your uh, molecular formula so watch that video um, it's this that step is not in your notes but it's a nice extra um, that you can add because you're definitely going to have to do this later on um, in chemistry. Let's go back to page 15 now after all that theory. At the top of page 15, underneath empirical formula, there's a nice example there explained in the text. There's a new compound, could be analyzed in the following way. And there it's got the percentage composition of this compound, which is 53.3% oxygen, 40% carbon, and 6.6% hydrogen. Okay, so what did I say to you before? Percentage equals mass if you assume that everything is 100. Within that compound, it's 100 grams of compound. So you guys can take those values now and based on what we have just done, maybe you can work out what that, what that compound is and you can drop me a message if you think you know what it is, following the steps that we just did. The example I want to go through with you now is the iron oxide example on the, on the page. So if we have a compound of 14 grams of iron and 6 grams of oxygen. How do we calculate the empirical formula of this? So first, so we first we write down what we have each element. The second thing we're going to do is we are going to work out the moles. So yeah, it's literally going to be mass divided by molecular mass. So yeah, for for iron, I'm going to get 0 0.25, and for oxygen, I'm going to get 0 0.375. Those are very, very small decimals. So we're going to attempt to get to um, whole numbers. How do we get to whole numbers with 0 0.25? I'm going to have to multiply by 4. So to multiply by 4, I'm going to get to 1. Okay? To multiply by 4, I'm going to get 1.5 oxygen. It's still not a whole number, grade tens. But you you you've done everything right at this stage, but it's still not a whole number for oxygen. So now I have to multiply by a further two. So I'm gonna have for iron it's gonna be a ratio of two, for oxygen it's gonna be three. So therefore, the ratio of iron to oxygen is two to three, and the formula, the empirical formula, is going to be Fe2O3. Okay, so see if you can do the one at the top with the carbon and the oxygen and the hydrogen. See what you come up with. I'd be interested to see if you guys get it. And then also there are four questions on page 15 and 16. It's your job to do those four questions now and to work out the molecular, I mean, sorry, work out the empirical formula for those four questions which we will cover in the next lesson. I hope everything was great and I hope you understand all of this and have a great day.